Hi everyone and welcome back for a new Spring Boot 101 video. Today I'm going to show you how to install and configure IntelliJ in order to develop Spring Boot applications. Now IntelliJ is an IDE but it's definitely not the only IDE that you can use for Spring Boot apps. You can certainly use Eclipse for example. But I'm using IntelliJ so this video is going to be focused on that. Um, another thing that you should be aware of is that I'm recording this video after the other ones. So this means that I'm going to install a newer version of IntelliJ. I'm going to install IntelliJ version 2016.3 and in the videos I have been using IntelliJ 15. So uh, it's a small discrepancy here, but other than that, the installation and configuration processes are the same. So let's get to it. So before we get started, the first thing that we need to do is we have to download the Java Development Kit, so the JDK. You can download it from oracle.com. You see here that we have Java Platform JDK version 8. And okay, I already have it installed, but if you don't have it installed, then you have to accept the agreement, the license, and then choose the JDK that is appropriate for your machine. But okay. Then <coughs> to get IntelliJ, you need to go to jailbrains.com. IDEs and here we have IntelliJ IDEA. Now in order to develop web applications you will actually have to download IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate. So uh, Ultimate is the paid version. Now uh, if you're a student for example uh, you can actually get it for free. You just have to send them an email and they'll give you a free license. Other than that you have 30 days of trial and then you have to actually pay for it. But okay. It's a pretty cool IDE and I think um, it's worth the, the, the money. Okay, I have downloaded IntelliJ IDEA here and now I have to install it. Okay. Okay, accept. Okay, the IntelliJ setup. Okay, I'll leave it the default folders here. Um, Okay, I don't really care about this. JetBrains, and now we're going to install the tool now. This may take uh, a couple of minutes, depending on your machine. Okay, now we have installed IntelliJ. We can actually run it. And now we'll have to, because it's the first time that you run IntelliJ, okay, I do not, I actually have some settings from my previous version, but um, I'll just say I do not want to import my settings because I want to show you how you can actually configure the ID uh, for a clean install. Okay, so we'll accept the policy. Um, okay, I'll just click evaluate for free because um, I can't remember my, <laughs> my, my password. Okay, let's say evaluate, accept. Okay, so we can select a theme. Okay, I'll go with the uh, actually go with the light one. Okay, now we have uh, all the plugins that we can add to our ID. Now, of course, the selections that you make here are really dependent upon what you want to use this ID for. So I'm going to show you what I select, but that doesn't mean that uh, we have to select the same things. So based on the applications you develop, on the servers that you use, on the frameworks that you use you might need to choose uh, something different. So Java frameworks, okay? Uh, I just care about Spring, about Spring and Hibernate. Okay, I don't care about the others. Uh, build tools, Ant and Maven. Uh, I don't really work with Gravel right now, so I'll go back. Web development, uh, HTML, less. I don't work with Hamel, I don't work with SAS, I don't work with CoffeeScript, I don't work with Stylus, I don't work with Flash. Okay. Version control, I just use GitHub, so I'll eliminate the others. Test tools, I basically use JUnit and coverage. Okay, don't need the other ones. Clouds, uh, I don't use cloud platforms so far. I don't write applications in Spring, so I don't need it. Android, not at this moment. Database tools, yes, these are pretty useful, so they should be enabled. Other tools, okay, the bytecode viewer, okay, remote access, mm, I don't know, UML, okay, 
and some comp the terminal I don't know can leave them like this and plugin development disabled okay now next now we have some more uh, plugins that we can enable so I'm just going to click live edit node.js integration and the angular 1 and 2 support and that's it so at this point I have finished my uh, configuration of IntelliJ so it means I can actually start using uh, IntelliJ okay now that we have installed IntelliJ we can actually create our first Spring Boot project now we have two ways of doing this one is directly from the IDE and the other one is to go to spring.io and download your Spring Boot template so let's explore both of them I can have create new project now I have the Spring Initializer option over here okay and now I'm presented with a small menu so I can decide you know the the group name I can decide my artifact name let's call it Spring Boot demo and now we have the packaging the type of project is it Maven is it Gradle um, if it's a jar or a war file the Java version and then some more you know name of your project and uh, package okay hit next and now we have we, we can choose all the dependencies that we need to install so you can see that spring boot uh, the version that we're going to use 1.4.2 and now I can actually select my dependency so I'll click web so I have one dependency um, and then you can start and explore things over here for example templating engines you might want time leaf for SQL you might want JPA and the embedded database and basically you can navigate this list and select the dependencies that you want then you hit next you hit finish and now uh, basically you will be presented with a new uh, no tips thank you and now you are presented with a new uh, Spring Boot project so okay allow access uh, it always does this the first time you install the project so it's okay okay so now you have a new Spring Boot project and you can see you have source main Java and you have the Spring Boot demo application which is uh, the main class and of course uh, should you want you can also um, you can also execute it so we'll just have to wait for the project to finish indexing so you see that right now it's um, the ID is working but after this is finished we should be able to run a Spring Boot application okay so uh, it took quite a while but then again I'm working on my laptop uh, now okay the uh, the ID has finished everything that you need to do it downloaded all the dependencies uh, it configured all the plugins and now we see we can actually run our Spring Boot demo application so I'll hit run and our web application should fire up okay and we can see it we can actually see the terminal output right here okay cool so n this is one way of creating Spring Boot applications and it's probably the one that you use most of the time but there is another one and another way of uh, creating Spring Boot apps is by going to spring.io uh, so we can go to www.spring.io okay and now we can actually uh, okay it's the spring initializer okay so you, you want to generate a spring boot template so again you're presented with a sort of menu which is pretty similar to what we saw in IntelliJ so we want to generate a maven project we want the spring boot version to be 1.4.2 okay I can say uh, spring boot demo uh, 2 and again now we can start to search for dependencies so I want to add web I want to add JPA I want to add H2 I want to add uh, time leaf okay so we got all the dependencies that you want and then you can 
click on the generate project button so and if you want to open that project you need to go to file uh, it's I think it's import project here somewhere open okay and you need to go you need to find that archive so in my case it's users uh, it should be desktop okay spring boot demo and you need to click the on the pom file so you'll actually open it as a maven project okay open as project um, okay I want to replace this window and now you basically will load uh, the spring initializer template that we got from that side but pretty much it's the same thing so you still get a pom file you still get the dependencies and you still get the um, the main class here which of course you can actually run so it's the same process um, just that uh, the first one is actually built directly into the ID and like I told you it's the one that you'll use most of the time this concludes today's video if you've enjoyed it please hit the like button or share it with your friends you can also find more software development articles on my blog at www.romaniancoder.com and if you want to get in touch with me, you can also find me on Facebook at Romanian Coder. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Write amazing code and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.